So, like I introduced myself and, and got to talking to a little bit of you, um, this is really base level advanced custom fields. So for those of you that have never heard of advanced custom fields, touched advanced custom fields, this is gonna be a great entry point for that as far as understanding what advanced custom fields is and uh, being able to utilize that in your site. Uh, throughout this presentation, I'll have some slides that will show uh, website examples, work that I've done, things that I've completed with advanced custom fields that hopefully um, spur into you some of those thinking, some of those thoughts as to how you can use advanced custom fields for your site. Uh, so again, advanced custom fields uh, for the non-advanced. I'm Jonathan Ober. Uh, so when we think about our websites and we think about uh, the work that we're doing as designers and maybe even as developers, um, we really want three things. Uh, we want well-designed sites, we want our clients to, uh, to have the complete freedom to be able to edit the content on their sites. And then we also, we don't want our client to ruin them. So as a designer developer, I'm building websites in Photoshop and I'm handing those off to clients and I'm hoping that they don't ruin the, the work that I've done, the designs that I've done. And so these are some of the problems uh, in the real world that sometimes we face. We're looking at, uh, you know, you design a site, and you hand it off, and all of a sudden the client starts updating content, and we know how things can go. Um, so I'm gonna start first with some examples, and these are just uh, sites that I've done, uh, things that I've completed, uh, just to kind of give you a little base level of the work that I'm doing. And some of these I'll come back to again in uh, slides later. So a lot of these you'll see uh, slideshows with headings and subheadings, you'll see buttons, you'll see some different visual elements where there's uh, separation of graphics. These are all done in advanced custom fields. This one in particular had some alternating content left and right with images and headings and text. Another slideshow has some buttons. Uh, this one actually has a video slideshow that moves. Uh, as well. Sometimes uh, service elements, you know, a business wants to promote what they're doing and so they'll have little blocks of services. Um, this uh, section of this site here has uh, some sections that detail some of their contact information, other outlets where they've, um, how they have uh, lo different locations, they have a gallery, news and articles, and we're doing a lot of work there with advanced custom fields. Another example here, just a team page. Uh, utilizing advanced custom fields to show uh, a staff page. So at this point, right now, what I'm just showing you is design. Sites that I've designed or I've worked on and different elements. Uh, you know, like I said, slideshows, services, uh, breakdown of uh, what the client's doing, what the site is trying to convey. And that's a beautiful design, okay? And so hopefully some of you, you know, if you are a designer, you're designing sites like this and you're, again, maybe looking at some of what I've shown you and you're thinking, well, how do I design that? How do I create a homepage like that? And so that's kind of what I wanna get into now. So we're all familiar with this guy, our WordPress editor, it's gone away um, to, to soon, maybe. Um, but we're, we're familiar with the content editor, but we know that as uh, maybe content writers or as designers and developers, we're very limited to what we can do in that. We have our headings, we have bullets, we have lists. Um, we have some degree of uh, you know, creating content on the left and the right and the center, but there's really not a lot to design when it comes to that. I'll preface this by saying, I'm sorry if you're a Gutenberg uh, lover or BFF or whatever, but soon Gutenberg's going to be here, and I'm not going to talk bad about Gutenberg because honestly, I haven't had enough experience with it. I've had enough to make me hesitate uh, right now uh, because of the work that I'm doing in advanced custom fields. It's not quite there for the work that I'm doing, but I also will preface this by saying I launched a site for a school with 185 pages about two months ago. That's all running on Gutenberg right now, and so far, whew, so good. <laughs> so 
when we're looking at designing our sites and we look at the, the editor, you know, we talk about, I talk about how that's very limited in what you can do. You know, you don't have a lot of columns. You don't have out of the box, you know, uh, the, the way to align content, put in images and have text next to it, at least not easily. You end up getting that kind of juxtaposition of uh, images that maybe the content flows underneath and you don't have that, that creative freedom or that ability to really control that. Gutenberg brings in columns and some different block elements that really helps to separate those things, but it's still not quite there when it comes to designing full websites. So now we bring in page builders. Love them or hate them, I'll tell you I've used them. I've also probably abused them as uh, crutches to design quickly for clients who don't have uh, funds to really put together a, a custom built design. Uh, but at the same time, one of my first points was that I'm designing sites and I want the client to edit those, but I also don't want them to ruin them. And if you've used any one of these, maybe Visual Composer and Elementor and Divi uh, Beaver Builder, you know that once you give that over to the client, say goodbye to the design that you made, right? Now, there are some lockdown things that you can do, but for the most part, once you give them a page builder, they will ruin it. <laughs> so we have our problem. We have our desire. Let's talk now about our solution. That's advanced custom fields. So advanced custom fields, what is it? It's a WordPress plugin which allows you to add extra content fields to your WordPress edit screens. These extra content fields are more commonly referred to as custom fields, part of the CF. And then they can allow you to build websites faster and educate your clients quicker. I will say again, when we look at those page builders, if you've ever made a page builder site, a Divi site, educating your client on how to edit that, how to drag things in the right order, add some padding, add some margins, it's difficult. You're now giving them design tools, design tools that maybe as a web designer, that you've spent years learning how to properly pad something, give it margins, uh, strokes, whatever it might be, design. So again, part of what ACF is, it uh, gives you the ability to add fields on demand. Um, the ACF Field Builder allows you to quickly and easily add fields to your WP Edit screens with only a click of a few buttons. And I know that sounds like magic in easy words, but when you get into it, you start to build a workflow where it really is easy and few buttons. You can take ACF and you can add fields anywhere. So if you have a cu custom post type, you want to add fields, you can add fields. If you have a post or a page, you can add fields. You want to have advanced custom fields based off of users that are logged in, you can do that. You really truly can add fields anywhere. And then you can show them anywhere. So again, as you're creating fields and you're creating content with advanced custom fields, you can begin to place them around your design, whether it's in the footer, the header, the sidebar, within your page, you can really build uh, 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 nice sites, great sites, um, putting content fields anywhere. So let's look at what kinds of fields there are. This list is huge, might be a little overwhelming, um, but for me and for what we wanna cover, just basic, uh, the fields that I love and use a lot, the text field, the text area field, image field, checkbox and radio buttons, uh, true false button groups, um, Wissy wig, I use that one a lot. The, I'm trying to think what else I use a lot. Uh, flexible content and the repeater field, use those tremendously. Um, now some of these fields, now, uh, advanced custom fields is a, a free plugin, but there are, uh, a, there is a paid version of developer license that gives you um, all of these fields. So not, if you go and you download advanced custom fields right now, you're not gonna see some of these. Um, and I'll be the first to say that Advanced Custom Fields Pro is probably my best investment as a web designer developer. Um, I learned about Advanced Custom Fields probably three years ago. I've used it on every website since at the developer level and I don't get any money for saying that. <laughs> so now that we know a little bit about, again, our problem and a solution, Advanced Custom Fields, 
let's look at how we get started with advanced custom fields. So when I get a design, when I get a new site from a client, I, I have a process. I basically, I look at that website and I say to myself, do I need more than just a content editor? Do I need more than just uh, what the WordPress content editor has to offer or something like Site Origins, Page Builder, or even um, you know, uh, Gutenberg and where that's going right now? Do I need more than that? And then I also look at my design and I think to myself, looking at the elements of that design, that slideshow, that services offering, that uh, team page, what field groups or fields will I apply to that design? Okay. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at exactly that. And I'm going to walk you through how to get started with advanced custom fields. So the first thing you do in advanced custom fields is you want to create field groups. And typically, my process is I look at the different sections of the site. So again, I think in that block terminology, left, uh, top to bottom, left to right, and how I'm going to lay out content on my site. So with advanced custom fields and field groups, I might have a field group for the home page because I have uh, special content on that call to action, services. Um, if I'm using something throughout my site, like a slider on the top of the page, I'll turn that into a field group. Um, so a lot of times just thinking about how you'll utilize those elements on your site within your templates um, helps to kind of um, uh, drive how you set up those field groups. So here's an example of some field groups that I've set up. So I had um, an attachment page, I had a home page slider, an options page, and um, just a field group that was assigned to my pages. And I'll get into more about how you assign those to different templates uh, later in another slide. So now that I have my field group, it's time to get started adding fields to that group. So field group is kind of the outside box. Fields are the next step. When you set up a new field group, you're going to set up a field name. And, and then you're going to end up set, setting up the type. So the first thing you do and we'll look at a slide that has a picture of that, is give it a name um, and then give it a type. Pro tip, um, if you're using, if you're creating field groups and you're creating fields, uh, make sure not to um, give similar or the same names to your field names uh, because there can be some conflicts there, uh, especially if you get into multiple field groups and you might have a reference to an image. You don't want to just call it image every time. Um, it's not. That one won't necessarily hurt everything, but it gets confusing when you're looking at your code. So this is our, um, once we've created a field group, we've clicked in now, and um, we're naming our field group. Um, so up here in the top, we'll name our field group just like we name a page or a post. And then underneath of that, we have our field order, label, uh, field name, and field type. Um, what you're gonna end up doing then is at this point, you'll add a field which is our blue button here. And then you'll go through some different options. Um, so at this point, and this is a little scrolled down. Um, this is actually in our field group. Um, I've scrolled down. And these are other options where um, one of the powerful things with advanced custom fields is that if you have a field group, let's say you um, created a custom page or a custom post type using a field group. And you can use these options. You can turn off certain um, content editor type things uh, like your excerpt field or your content editor altogether, different things within WordPress you can turn on and off um, so that when you're creating a custom page template like a home page, maybe you don't want the original content editor to be there, but you want your own fields to be there. So we're going to give our field some settings. We're going to label it, and, we're, and that label is essentially going to auto-generate a name. Um, you can change those, but to me it's like, I'm naming something, so I kind of want that field name to be the same. Um, the field name is what's going to be called up in your code, and we'll look at some of that um, PHP code uh, in a little bit. You also select your field type there. Um, that'll be that long list from that prior slide where there was uh, like 30 different options. Each field type has different options here. 
So I'm selected on the text option, um, but if you select image or, or any of the other options, th this will, um, use condi using conditional logic, will change and reflow um, depending on which one you select it. So just be mindful of that. Um, there are other settings there, but since we're just talking basic level uh, ACF, I'm not going to get into them. Um, I'll be honest, I don't really use a lot of these either. Um, the, the top portion here is where the main uh, nuts and bolts are of your ACF field groups or field settings. So now we have our, so we have our field group and we've assigned fields. So now we've got to tell those fields where to go. Okay, so we're going to assign our field groups to our page or post template um, or a specific area of your site. Um, in the next screen, you'll see this, but a pro tip here is you can have a field group, you can create it once, and you can assign it to multiple page templates or post templates. It's a pretty sweet thing. Um, so you end up getting this location meta box, which allows you, again, you can do an and type thing. So if I select a post type that's in a certain category, it will only show those fields for that. Um, you can use the or rule. So like, for instance, I, I create a lot of pages where there's a slideshow at the top, and I might use that on the home page, but I might also use that same slideshow, the code, maybe not the same style, on a post or a page template. So I create that slider once, and I can use that using the or. I can assign that to any template. We're about ready to get into some code. Okay, so if this is, if this has so far been scary, I apologize for the next scary thing. If this hasn't been and you're still tracking with me, hopefully you are, this will scare you. So now we're going to display our values in our theme. So the way that ACF works is basically you want to retrieve field values. So again, let's say um, I have a field that's, um, you know, I'm writing my own custom page and I have a title and a subtitle that I want to kind of override um, the content editor, and I have other fields in there. I'm going to use get field or the field, depending on how I want to work my code, to basically pull that content that's being entered into the field, and I'm going to display that content in my code, which will then in turn display on the front end of my site. So we're retrieving a field value as a variable. We're going to use get field function. This is the most versatile function, which will allow the return of a value for any type of field. And to display a field, you can use the field, uh, the underscore field, in a similar fashion. So let's look at what that means, because right now it might not mean anything. So we're displaying a value in our theme. So this is essentially the code, either the top or the bottom, that I would want to use to display values in my theme. So again, I can use the very basic level, the field, and then in the green, the field name, whatever I've put in that box on that field group, will display on my page or on my post because I put that code into my template file. Now, one of the things that I've been doing recently is because, again, I want to prevent clients from ruining my life, is <laughs> sometimes a client might fill in content, but they might miss a field box. So what do you do if they don't fill in content? Maybe just don't display that field. So for instance, I'll show an example later where there's um, a staff page and everybody has, or most everybody, uh, because we don't talk in absolutes, we're not Sith, um, <laughs> most everybody has like a LinkedIn or a Gmail or something in their profile. Well, some of those people just don't want to have that public. So if you use um, the field name, field name, the first one, and you're trying to pull that link in, it's going to look for that and it's going to create that space in your code. But if you check first to see if that field has been filled in, it's going to just skip over it because we're using the get field. And then it's basically like, well, you're not there, so I'm just going to skip over you. When I learned that part, that was like a light bulb revelation for me. It's great. So there's more examples of this on um, advancedcustomfields.com in their resources. Um, I will say, like as a plugin, they have superb documentation. Uh, so all of this can be found there as far as uh, helpful stuff. So now what I want to do is I want to start to show you some examples. So this is a slideshow, and this goes through each picture. And right now in this design, the heading and the subheading and the button text is all the same. But the way that I'm controlling this is through advanced custom fields. 
So I have a slideshow field group called Slides, and, and that's here. And so I've named that field group Slides. And what I'm using here is because this particular piece of content is repeated, I'm using the repeater field, uh, field type. So in that repeater, I have these other fields. So basically, let's just say, like, I want to do something multiple times. I can create a repeater. And so it runs that uh, field types each time. So this one, uh, this particular client wanted the ability to have either, either a video or an image. So the first thing I do is I just check with a radio button, is it a video or an image? Advanced Custom Fields has conditional logic, so I can actually pull that in and say, okay, if it's a video, upload a video file. So I can upload that MP4 or whatever it might be. And then if it's an image, it gives me the ability to upload an image. So again, on the back end, I'm making that choice. The client has the ability to choose a video or an image, and then they upload accordingly. And then this one uh, has a place for heading text, um, content, so that little paragraph underneath and then button text and button link. So again, to give the client the full ability to edit that, they need to have all these fields. Um, now, if they remove one of those or they just don't have a field uh, filled out, that field just doesn't show. So that button doesn't show with just an empty square with no text if they don't fill that stuff in. So this is the, the field group with its fields. This is what the slideshow looks like within the WordPress editor. So on the home page, I've assigned this field group to the home page template, and now they will see this little slides area where they see that radio button. I choose image or video. They can upload an image. I add some little text in there to tell them how big that image should be. And then they have a heading text. They have that content. They have a button text and the button link. Okay. And again, the way that I'm doing this, you'll see the code in the next slide. Okay, so that, that's our, uh, in the back end admin of WordPress, I go to the homepage, that's what I'm seeing. So, oh, oh I didn't preface, scary slide. All right, so, oh so this is code, so my, 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 my HTML and CSS, or my HTML and PHP are showing, um, but this is a slide, and I know for those of you that might be further back, it might be a little hard to read, but um, I was trying to fit like all the lines of text on the slide and it was not really working out. But basically what this repeater is doing is it's, uh, I got a div that just called slide, slider because I'm a, I'm a simple man. And um, within that we're looking for the field group slides. And because it's a repeater, it's gonna go through that looking each time, does it have an image or a video? Does it have a heading? Does it have a subheading? Does it have a button text and a button link? When it gets to the end of that, you know, if the client has three slides or five slides, it'll just execute. And so this bit of code is basically bringing that in. So you can see in the top, or maybe you can't see because you sat far back because you don't want to be in the front, um, that I'm getting things like the background image, uh, the button text, the button link, and all those, bringing those variables in, and that's coming out then in my code. Um, and again, these slides will be up later. Um, I think they'll be tweeted out or whatever. So another way that I use advanced custom fields is through the uh, WYSIWYG field group. So this, I kind of condensed it all into one, that way you could see it. So I have, um, using advanced custom, custom fields option page, I have an options page, a theme options set up where I have a footer column one, where basically it's a WYSIWYG, where they can enter the logo and their contact information. And this is the one line, I kid you not, of advanced custom fields PHP that then spits out that text. Now I've styled that, so I'm calling up that class uh, item or column one and styling specifically the gray text and then the bold text is um, white. Um, but that's all controlled in the theme options where the client can come in and change the phone number if they ever you know, change that. So another thing that I've done a lot with advanced custom fields, it's another repeater, it's a service repeater. So this is my field group. These are the repeater fields. I have image, image, uh, type, a title that's a text type, content that's a text area, button text and button link. And so in the WordPress editor, I get this block where I can, the client can change the image of that service, give it a title, give it some content, button text and a button link. 
That's the scary stuff. So again, that repeater is calling up services from the options page. So this is a little different. I have a central location for my theme options. When you do an options page, you have to make sure that you're calling up those options by doing, instead of just uh, looking for the field group, you have to look for it, comma, little quote, options, close quote. So that way it just knows that it's pulling from that options page. Um, the nice thing about that, think of that as like if you've ever done print, like a master page, I use the theme options as kind of like global settings, master settings for the site. And then on the front end, this is what it looks like. So when you go to the site, you would see their services, they repeat. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is uh, repeaters are drag and drop capable. So if, for instance, the client wants to say, you know what, we really want to push our assembly, let's move that to the center, or let's move that to the front, they could just drag that field after they've filled it all in to the top of the list, and it'll be right at the top, or it'll end up being on the left. I have another example of a service repeater. I don't have the code up here, but again, this one has a background image, text, and then those buttons link out. So another example that I'd like to show you is just a staff page. This again has images, and this is a repeater, images with a title, the person's name, and then underneath of that, uh, the field group has a uh, place for um, like a description, like what their job description is, their phone number, uh, their email address, and they have fields that they can just fill in. Again, if there's not content in that field, it just won't show. So one person might have you know, four bullets next to their name with their different description and everything. Somebody else might only have three, like this guy at the bottom. So instead of, uh, so I coded in those slashes because you know we didn't want the client to mess up the putting in slashes uh, to to kind of design that there. So this is an example of somebody who didn't want their LinkedIn information out there, and they just um, have three options versus the four. And this is another. Uh, this is a sister site of that previous one. This is their staff page. Again, very similar. That's just a repeater with the staff members. So another thing that you can do with advanced custom fields, I have uh, using some uh, like nth child type uh, shenanigans and tomfoolery. I have a repeater, but it just alternates uh, that uh, left and right position as far as the image and the text and everything. So again, if you did uh, gave that over to a client to design a page with a, uh, with a page builder, um, they'd probably mess that up. They'd probably figure out how to use an H2 versus an H1 or whatever it might be, um, put different text on the button, put a different color on the button. Um, how many of you have had clients do like hot pink or hot green text? You know, So this is just a repeater uh, for the different sections of the site, and they can put in the title, the subtitle, um, that content, and the button text. So another thing that I've done before using advanced custom fields, got that big stretched image, and you just want some text with a heading and, and some content and a button. Um, again, they can just swap out background images, and I just have it set to cover. So if they, unfortunately, this is one that they can mess up, uh, but I put in text that says, use a certain size image, um, but they could upload a thumbnail size. And <laughs> you can't 100% uh, dummy proof anything, but it's just another example of advanced custom fields. So I showed you this slideshow before. Um, again, this has heading text, subheading, uh, button text, and button link. And again, the client can control the order of those slides very easily. I don't know about you guys, but I've used like revolution slider and uh, there's tons of ones out there. Um, I actually use just a very simple Al slider carousel uh, with, so it's a little bit of JavaScript with advanced custom fields to make all this magic work. And a nice thing, if you were in Tim's talk uh, first thing in the morning, so like what seems like a day ago, if you had to speak last, <laughs> um, if you were in T Tim's talk right here, he, he, sat, he stood right here too. Um, Let's talk about design systems. And one of the things that Advanced Custom Fields has really helped me with is building design systems. Because if you look at it, like the examples I've showed you, they all have slideshows. They all have service blocks. They have uh, staff member pages. They, they're designed differently. They look differently. 
But when it comes to the back end, advanced custom fields, it's all the same. Like, uh, I'll be honest, uh, don't show this to anybody that I work for, but um, I go into my sites and I just can export field groups from one site to another, just like you export post into another. You can uh, export a JSON file, open up advanced custom fields, say import, import it. It'll say, it'll have your field group, it'll say slides, and you'll go into it and it'll be your repeater. And it'll say image or video. And like, that's like my starting thing. Like I just have a couple JSON files. I just reuse over and over again because it works. So this is like taking Tim's design style uh, to the next degree as a developer, being able to design these. So again, another slideshow. This one's just heading and button, button text. So, um, so I survived. <laughs> Thank you, Ken, for that picture. <laughs> so, so hopefully problem solved. We want to design better websites. I don't know about you, I want to design better websites. Hopefully you as well want to design better websites. We want our clients to be able to have complete freedom to edit. So I don't need to be called up to say, hey, can I change the text on this slideshow? I was like, yes, yes you can. Remember when I taught you advanced custom fields in your site? Oh yeah, and they can go and edit that. Um, but I don't want them to ruin it. And, and while I, I jest about, you know, hey, it's, it, you can ruin things, it's really hard, I will say, it's really hard to ruin an advanced custom field site because I'm controlling the, the fields and I'm controlling the design and I'm just letting the client deal with the content. So I think that's it. This better not be a math problem. No, okay, no. awesome, go ahead. Even though, oh, as you say, it is really hard to ruin, they always find a way to ruin it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. what you do. Yeah, I mean, there's there's only so much that I can right. that I can really control. But for the most part, advanced custom fields is uh, pretty bulletproof when it comes to that. Um, in your example of that, there the slider that they could put a thumbnail up. Mm -hmm. Could you put in advanced custom fields or in the code to say it has to be a minimum dimension I think to reduce? Can set the field. I think you can set yeah, you can set. You, so you can I, set. That would just set it, or could it actually just then prevent them from using that as a smaller image? That it has to be a minimum. Yeah, I think yeah. you can do. There's yeah. pretty much uh, min max, and a lot of things have, um, like, you know, if you're uploading, like, certain file types, like, limit it. I mean, I, I, I created, so for the school district that we just did, um, we I built um, this convoluted mess, but it was a PDF uploader for like school minutes and stuff. And it's literally like upload a file, but it has to be a PDF because I didn't want them uploading <laughs> DOC files, <laughs> you know? So a lot of the field types have <coughs> qualifications that need to be met before, and they'll get uh, the great red like box highlight, and it'll be like, hey, you did this wrong, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, you could do, yeah, required, you could do required on everything. He said if they try and upload a thumbnail, if there was a way to put minimum dimension. Right. And it would yep. be required. Yes. So. Yes, sir. I'm just thinking about, like, stepping a user through who's got to be generating content. You don't know who they are. They might be two or three people beyond the people that you train. Mm -hmm. So that helper text that you were showing in the left hand column, is that a relatively simple integration with the plugin, or is it? Oh, it's, it's simple. Let me see if I could find you one that has a field. Uh, you know what? Here, I'll I'll do what I don't ever like to do, and that's called live websites. <laughs> uh, so this is a site that I have. These are our field groups, and I can go into. Oh, look at that! Um. Listen. <laughs> this is why he doesn't do live demos. I don't even know how to, I guess, arrangements? Oh, there we go. Wasn't turned on. I just didn't want you guys to see all my production, my notes that I didn't write. All right. Um, so your question was adding in uh, specific details. So I can come in here. And here I can give instructions for the author shown when submitting data. So you can put little text like 
hey, this text should be, or this uh, image should be a certain size, or this text should have a certain amount of characters, or this is where this text is displayed in the slideshow underneath the heading, like if you want to get super specific. But yes, you can, it's built right in, baked right into the system. I was expecting that one from him. No. <laughs> okay, so I, okay, so the other day, like, Joe tweeted something, and I was like, I'm doing some ACF stuff in Gutenberg, and it's crap ta crapping out or whatever, and he was like, well, that's on ACF. And I I'm pretty much in the camp of, um, I feel like we're in the witching hour when it comes to, like, 5.0, like, I'm going to wake up and be really upset, because... <laughs> I feel like it's just coming. There, there's just bugs still that how ACF is integrated into where it falls in the blocks. Like I was running into things. So when I do slides for uh, sites, I make it so that uh, the slider is always at the top because in my mind, that's where the slideshow is. So if I go to this site and I go to edit, my slider is at the top. Well, Gutenberg doesn't even acknowledge ACF when I say put this right after the title because you can tell it where in the position and it automatically just drops it after Gutenberg and again I don't know if that's on ACF or if that's just Gutenberg being like I'm the new kid on campus and I don't really care so there are some things there I think yeah I mean I don't really know the answers <laughs> There's still definitely some things to figure out. I have, and I'll admit, I don't know if this should be on camera, but um, I've been hitting classic editor on a lot of my sites just because the customizations that I'm building, Gutenberg is not ready for me to be able to train those clients. Yep. One way or the other, somewhere down the line. Yep. There was a great article written, um, and Kevin was just reading it, um, it, that explains what it does, what's coming with ACF, and what they're working on. Yeah. Well, I know with the changes to our right-hand sidebar and how content gets pulled, and I think Paul had shown a little toggle with short codes and how to get that in there. So ACF, you can manipulate some of that sidebar content. Like I often will put in not just a featured image, but maybe... Like I have a, like this client in particular, uh, they have a blog post that on the blog uses a featured image, but then inside the blog uses a different featured image. So I just created a secondary featured image. Well, ACF and Gutenberg doesn't like that over in the sidebar. So now I'm dropping that down into just another field in that block at the bottom. So it's not there yet. It's, when it comes out, it's gonna, there's going to be yeah. tweaks coming from both sides. Yeah. Way I look at. yeah, exactly. But is that just the layout that changes, but the function is still the same, or it just stops working? Because that is the worry, right? I, from what I've done, because the school district site was running both ACF and Gutenberg, from what I've done, it's it seems like rhyme and reason there aren't any. And sometime, like, I haven't seen functionality go away but I don't know if that's because my field was filled in and initiated before Gutenberg was installed and it's still in the database. And aside from flushing that and hoping for the best, um, it's, yeah, it, it, needless, like I'm not an expert in all things that ACF and Gutenberg are fighting about right now, but from what I've experienced, it's not there yet. Good questions. So that concludes my presentation. I'm not really good at bowling, but if you're going to the after party and you want to talk, I would probably ref prefer talking than playing than, than bowling. But if required. if there's a pool table, is, <laughs> Done. It, Done. is there a pool table? I think, I think there is. If there's a pool table, that's probably where you'll find me. I don't want to play you. You do math on Saturday. <laughs> pool is just math. Not always.
I mean, it's luck too, but it's mostly yeah. math. Yeah. It's, it's math. Let's just, so. You guys have been awesome. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of the day. You, you, you might think you won with all this ACF knowledge, but I got a free breakfast today because I switched with somebody, so. <laughs>